We had an opportunity to get involved with Bay Meadows as they had a failing uh, septic treatment system and the Ministry of Environment had uh, put them under an order that they were no longer allowed to use the subsurface discharge bed. I do know that they looked at options around rebuilding the subsurface bed and found that potentially they needed a different solution. The old bed means it was breaking down, we had to pump every day. So we have three tanks in here that we had to pump out because they go in chambers, they all pump from the hill down to this bed. So we would have to pump them out two to three times a day. And if we got heavy rains, then we had heavy infiltration through the old piping. So we'd have to pump out maybe four times a day. And this was seven days a week. And we had to do that for two years by the time we got the finalization to go ahead and proceed with the new plant. The consultant came to us and asked us the question, what could we do in a situation like this? Um, we've got high bedrock, we've got a high water table, not a whole lot of options for space. Uh, yet a very strict criteria if we were going to use some sort of treatment that would allow us to surface discharge. So we're in a situation here in a bay on Lake Ontario that doesn't migrate well with the rest of the lake during most of the season other than early in the spring. So the effluent criteria needed to be uh, pristine. Um, probably the strictest that we're getting in Ontario with many regards. So it made sense that a membrane bioreactor provided the solution. The bay is actually cut right off from Lake Ontario. Only in the springtime does it uh, flood up enough to come over the sandbank. So I think that was one of the things that the Ministry of Environment really had to look at as to what we're putting in and then what will eventually in the spring get back out to Lake Ontario. Right? So we've got pretty strict parameters that we have to follow and with this new plant they're always right on the button. basically bring the feed in from the lift stations which get fed up to some fine screens which are mounted up on the roof. The flow then flows through back into an equalization basin to help us buffer out peak flow events. We then pump forward into the bioreactor. The bioreactor feeds forward based on permissives and then the membrane system which is also embedded within the bioreactor extracts the permeate through the pumps mounted on the roof and discharges through these columns that you see here which then puts the effluent through a UV system and then discharges out to the wetland by the bay. Well, because of the new system we have now, we can grow our park. Because when we were on this whole system and it was uh, breaking out on us, we could not bring in any night campers or anything. We were stuck with what we had for numbers and we couldn't grow anymore. So now with this in here now, we can develop the whole area behind us, throw in another 15 lots there, plus we can develop up by the tank too. We realize how important modularity is and, and the importance of reducing total install costs. And that's really been our focus. So we can provide a fully built and fully tested system that requires very little other than a, a foundation or some sort of pad, appropriate drainage and a collection system. And this can be dropped on site and commissioned in a matter of days. This particular project here at Bay Meadows took us a week to go from startup to effluent quality that we could discharge into the bay. The new plant, pretty much uh, hands off. Uh, you don't have to touch it. <laughs> you know, I love it because uh, no more pumping, which saves us big money, thousands, thousands of dollars a week, eh? And um, if there's a problem, it's monitored by Nutera, and they can do whatever they need to do right from their office. They can switch things around and move water and move sludge. Uh, I just go in and look every once in a while, <laughs> see what it looks like. <laughs>